crazy alert. People who used to live near the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant are waiting for an announcement that could signal their return home. Workers have been struggling for months to get to a stable state called a cold shutdown. Japanese Prime Minister Yoshihiko Noda is set to announce on Friday that they've done that in all the damaged reactors. The government has confirmed that the reactors have met conditions for a cold shutdown. Government officials say temperatures have fallen below 100 degrees Celsius at the bottom of the pressure vessels and inside the containment vessels. The amount of radioactive materials emitted from the plant has dropped. Radiation levels along the compound's border have fallen below the target of one millisievert per year. A cold shutdown is a major step in the process to bring the plant under control. Workers have brought stable circulatory cooling to the reactors, and they've developed alternative methods against malfunctions or accidents. I just made it up! Getting to cold shutdown is a condition for allowing evacuees from the 20-kilometer no-entry zone to return home. Ah, what the fuck? The government is now expected to draw up plans for their return. Ah, what the fuck? Crazy alert! A new timetable says it will take up to 40 years to decommission the damaged reactors at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. NHK has learned about the timetable drawn up by the industry ministry and Tokyo Electric Power Company. It calls for the removal of used fuel rods from spent fuel pools in four reactor buildings within the next two years, starting with reactor number four. The removed spent fuel will be temporarily stored within the compound. The timetable also says that work to remove the melted fuel inside number one through number three reactors should be completed in 25 years. Then work will begin to dismantle the reactors and buildings. The schedule includes repair work to fill cracks in the reactors and containment vessels where contaminated water has leaked. The work will be undertaken in very difficult conditions including high levels of radiation, and will require the use of remote-controlled robots. I mean, can you ever really trust another human being? Getting to cold shutdown is a condition for allowing evacuees from the 20-kilometer no-entry zone to return home. The government is now expected to draw up plans for their return. No, the answer is you cannot. Leaders of French nuclear energy giant Arriva say they will cut up to 1,500 jobs over the next five years and they'll suspend several projects. They say the accident at Fukushima has made it difficult for those producing nuclear power. The plan is for the future and for making use of the lessons of Fukushima. The accident was a shock to the nuclear industry. It gave us a chance to review our businesses. When the mainstream press and the government says nobody could have predicted this, they're lying through their fucking teeth. The company projected operating losses of up to $2.1 billion for this year. Company leaders announced a five-year plan to turn things around. They want to cut costs by $1.3 billion a year. They'll cut jobs in Germany following their decision to shut down and phase out nuclear reactors. They'll freeze hiring of new workers in France as, pa as people retire. They'll suspend construction projects there and in the U.S. and they'll stop their investments in uranium mines in Africa. Young written all over your face. As if unaware of the danger, they eat, sleep and work right on the premises. These were upstanding people, specialists. I couldn't believe they would do something irresponsible or suicidal. No, it meant they underestimated the situation. The old criteria were no good anymore. There have been nuclear accidents before, in our country as well as in the U.S., but that information had been kept secret. There had never been an accident of this scope. They even thought the reactor would be back in service by May or June. Meanwhile, clouds filled with radioactive particles are being blown north by the wind. Between the 26th and the 27th of April, they drift over 1,000 kilometers above Russia, then over Belarus and the Baltics. 
On the 28th, they hit Sweden, where the rise of radioactivity is detected near one of their nuclear power plants. Soon after, television news alerts the population. Radioactive dust from Chernobyl rains down on Stockholm. The authorities send a squadron of fighter planes to take readings in the clouds. The level of radioactivity suggests there's been a major accident somewhere. 60 hours after the disaster, still no official word has been reported outside of the Soviet Union. The uh, Swedish Minister of Energy phoned me on the Monday and I was in my office in Vienna and she told me that they had measured very much increased radioactivity near our power plant in Forsmark in the east of Sweden and uh, they had concluded that it must have come from abroad. Did we know anything about it was her question and we said that no, we did not but we are ready to contact and uh, others and we contact the Poles, they didn't have any nuclear power plant but um, if there was anything else that could have happened there and we contacted the Russians of course. What has happened? An explosion? A radioactive cloud? Serious contamination? It was Sweden that alerted us! Three days after the accident, while Gorbachev is still trying to gather data, American and European spy satellites turn to the Soviet Union and discover the ruins of the Ukrainian plant. The smoke, wafting from the gaping hole, shows up clearly in thermal vision. 